All right, woke up this morning. Um, it had been really windy last night. Realized that we did not tie down our rug outside. And Dave looked out the window and said, is our rug still there? And it's not. Gone. We're incredibly irresponsible rug owners. <laughs> what if this was a child? What if this was our pet? This is why we don't have dogs. They blow away at night. Here I like to take a look at other stuff since we're out. Make sure it's not tires look good and all that stuff. So anytime you get a chance, just walk around the rig and take a quick peek at it and make sure everything's good. Make sure our hooks are in there <laughs> still. That was for our Christmas wreath. Now we have to come up with something new to hang on our door. Well, I'm glad to hear that it's just a battery. And we don't have far to go today. We're only uh, driving down the road about an hour. So uh, I think we'll make it without that TPMS for that one tire. So now that we're driving again, I noticed that it came back on. I didn't really do anything. I gave it a little twist. That may or may not have done it. I doubt it. Sometimes it takes a little while for them to pair up. Like, yeah, I think you have to drive like 12 miles an hour before they, they pair up with the readout. So we're good to go. Today we're heading to a uh, regional park that we've never been to before. So I went ahead and reserved uh, a spot online. I was reading about it, uh, reading some reviews online and people were saying that it was really hard to make a reservation and I did not find it hard to make a reservation but I did read a review that said somebody made a reservation online and then somebody else called them and so it was a double reservation when they showed up somebody was in their spot so i'm a little bit nervous about that um, but hopefully that doesn't happen to us so i am just looking in my email to see what site we're supposed to be at should be interesting. It's called Skyline Regional Park and uh, the reservation site is the city of Buckeye. So we will see what that's like. What state is that in? Arizona. There you go. <laughs> we should be there in about 15 minutes. <laughs> Jacqueline just asked me what the temperature has to be before the snakes stop being dormant. And now she has me thinking about it. 
Thank you. You're welcome. No problem. I think it's still too cold for them. We'll find out, won't we? Mm-hmm. I'll protect you. <laughs> I don't know how, but... You are here. Look at all the trails. There are a ton of trails here. How fun. So the green means easy, and the blue is moderate, and then I'm assuming that the red and orange are harder. I don't see it on the map. So where are we? We're here. No, where are we? <laughs> oh, we are at Skyline Regional Park uh, in Buckeye, Arizona. And so far, it's beautiful. There are uh, tons of trails that we can go on. There are mountains. Um, they're not huge mountains, so they're more like foothills almost. And uh, there's a lot of vegetation here. We happen to pull in when it's sunny and beautiful. Uh, so far, so good. I'm thinking maybe there'll be some coyotes tonight that we can listen to. I love the sound of coyotes. It seems very almost deserted. You know, it's secluded, I guess is a better word. And uh, haven't heard about this place yet. So we're really enjoying it so far. Came upon the sign about creosote. And one thing that we were told last year with my allergies being in the desert, is that um, the creosote is what causes the allergies. But now we just found out that the natives use creosote to treat allergies. So I'm not sure on this one right now how that's supposed to work. So the next sign that we came upon was Triangle Leaf Bursage. We think we're saying it right, we're not sure. Bursage maybe, like sage bush. And this is the one that causes the um, allergies. So I apologize to the creosote my apologies sincerely for thinking that that was what it was and it's actually this little sucker right here that gives me the allergy so mm. triangle leaf bursage sage 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 i don't know where's my brother Vinny when i need him he's the master gardener in the family how come he's not out here with us Body blow, body blow. Rock 'em, sock 'em. Pile driver. You're mine. Gazoon tight. Tell me what you thought of. Where are we? Skyline Regional Park. I like it. Very basic, very simple. Uh, not a lot going on as far as like water hookups or anything like that, but a lot of people coming out to hike, a lot of fighter jets going over, and uh, it's beautiful. But yeah, very, like if you're not set up for dry camping, you don't have a generator, you know, not the place. All right, time to go. Let's go. Of water. We're going out boondocking, so I got eight of these because I figure it takes us one day to go through this just for drinking water between the two of us. So I got eight of them, so eight days. And then I got a couple of distilled waters for the little humidifier that we have. And uh, yeah, so we should be fully equipped and then we have the water that we have on board for everything else. Dishes, shower, toilet, all that. So we should be set now. Good. Yeah, for the next eight days. Water is heavy, very heavy. The fun part. Yeehaw. Is this the fun part? I love this part. My <laughs> favorite part about RV. <laughs> Doesn't bother me. Good. I'd rather have this than a cassette toilet. Okay. I don't know. If it were me, I probably would have the uh, 
what did you call it? Cassette toilet? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, whatever it is, biodegrade. What's it called? Again, I forget. Composting toilet. Composting toilet. Thank you. Yeah, I'd probably do that. But since Dave says he likes this, he loves this, <laughs> then we're going to stick with this. Can you put your foot on that for me, please? Can I put my foot on there? Yeah. yeah. Welcome to our life of camera work. That's right. So which guy, way do you guys need to face? I like to go 60 degrees. 60 degrees, the nose? Uh, no, okay. 60 degrees. Okay, so there's two options here. You can go here, and then there's a dip to get okay. to where you are. If you go down to this one, you have to kind of make a U-turn in order to get your nose facing that way. Okay, let me see which way is 60 on here. We're very, we're very fickle people. Very <laughs> Me fickle. too. How big is that dip? Is it doable? Yeah. Okay, I'll do the dip. Okay. I'll follow you. Okay. Can you walk fancy for us? Thank you. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, you're good. I just, I couldn't see them, so. We arrived in Kofa, which is about 30 minutes from Yuma and about 30 minutes from Quartzsite on Highway 95. A little ways back here, but it's beautiful. The mountains and uh, the sun, we came in at golden hour, so we kind of caught the, the best of the show. Um, it's beautiful back here and it was a long day because we had to uh, fill with water, we had to dump our tanks, we had to get propane, and we had to get gas in the truck and sometimes we get lucky when we go to one truck stop we can do it all there today we had to hit one two three different spots to get all that done so um we finally made it here today was definitely a long long travel day and uh we're happy to be where, where we're going to camp tonight so there we go As you can see, we're here at Kofa, and uh, Kofa is in Arizona. It is between um, Yuma and Quartzsite, and this is a national wildlife refuge. There are over 666,000 acres here. And what I learned about this place was that it was established um, by the Boy Scouts of America. So they wanted to preserve the bighorn sheep and uh, they had this campaign going on and they were successful at getting this turned into a national wildlife refuge. So now, you know, we can camp here um, on the free land where we are, but uh, there's also hunting if you get permits, um, hoping not right in our area. Uh, but there are bighorn sheep here, um, there are little kangaroo rats here, there are jackrabbits here, um, bats and mule deer and all kinds of different wildlife. So you can go on hikes here wherever you want and uh, yeah, it's just a great place to be. We're loving it so far.
that was a doozy. Yeah, that was a, that was a wait, wait, which part? <laughs> well, the fact that it's so crazy windy, trying to do anything and then that dip we went through. When we got here, we came in the one way and it didn't hit and I was assuming it wasn't exactly a perfect. So I was wondering if we are gonna hit on the way out and we did a little bit. The jacks on the, the 260RD are just too low. We, I'll be at a dump station and the guy will stand there and go, man, those jacks, are your jacks all the way up? And it happens multiple times. And I'm like, yeah, it's... Uh -huh. Yeah, those rear jacks are pretty low. I was worried, so when I heard it scrape, I was looking and I couldn't see the other one, so I didn't know how low that was. But just the one scraped a little bit, and then it was fine. Right. It'd be nice if you could take them and rotate and get them off, farther uh -huh. off the ground. That would be really nice. Yeah. That'd be nice. Well, I have sand in my mouth now from being out there in this wind with all the sand that we were kicking up with the RV. Yeah. So um, I'm chewing sand now. Okay. Yuck. That sounds tasty. Yeah, it's not. We're gonna need some water. But we made it, we got through. Goodbye to our friends and we'll see you down the road. See you down the road. slide out is really sticking. Sometimes when we bounce, we're bouncing pretty good through Phoenix, the roads are pretty bad, so I'll try it again. Hold on. Yeah, there's nothing over there, bottom or top. I've checked three times now. Well, this is a first. Uh, the slide won't come out straight, and I was just on tech support with Isaac from <laughs> Lippert. And it's the Schwintech system. And what's happening is it starts to go out and then this side over here holds up and the other side keeps going. You can hear it crunching and doing its thing. And la I think last time we put it out in Kofa, it was pretty rough. And now it's really rough to the point where we can't even get the slide out. So apparently there's a control box, never seen it. Um, I'm gonna have to Google it because I have no idea where the control box for this would sit um so we got to go look around for that and see what we can find because without the slide out we can't get to the bedroom can't get to the bathroom um got to figure it out how you doing today dave good how are you i am doing well is the number you're calling from going to be a good number just in case we get disconnected it is yes Okay, perfect. Um, I would just have to send you back over to our technical department and okay. they'll be able to help you, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Just one second, Dave. Okay. Hey, hey, Nick. My name's Dave Hudson. Hey, Dave. Good day to you, sir. Good call. Yeah. number ends in... Correct. All right. And what's the year make model that you're calling about today, Dave? 2020 Grand Design 260RD. Sign yep. 260 RD. Is yep. this a travel trailer or a fifth wheel? It's a fifth wheel. It's a, f a reflection series. Reflection. Sure. Yeah. What's going on? Well, we're trying to put the slide out, and one side it starts to come out, and then one side holds up. You can hear it crunching, and the other side keeps going, so it's coming out crooked. And we don't want to keep pushing it because we don't want it to jump off tracks or whatever. It's the Schwintech. We just it comes out, we pull it back in because we don't want it to jump off tracks or break or shear anything. Good call. Um, how confident are you in your battery uh, voltage? Our batteries right now are at 91%. Um, are you plugged into shore power or anything right now? We have solar. I can plug into a generator though if I need to. 
Um, no need right now. In fact, uh, if you have a, a switch or a fuse, a uh, clean way to disconnect that shore power temporarily for the troubleshoot, I will advise you to do so. Okay, yeah, right now we're just hooked to solar, but I can turn the solar off. Mr. Hudson, do you yeah. have a multimeter by chance? I do. Are there any fault codes on the controller? Have you located the controller? Yeah, yet? found the controller. Is there supposed to be a screen or something? I don't no, see there's it. two LED lights, one red, one green, and uh, they'll flash, and there's a discernible code based on the amount of flashes. No, nothing flashing in there. Can you run the slide into a behind and try to throw a fault code? See sure. what it is. Let me turn my power back on. How far does it travel before it binds? Uh, about, about three inches. And now... Really? Yeah. Okay, come back out. Yeah, it just binds up right away now. Any fault codes on the controller? I don't see anything. You gotta kind of look up in that hole, I guess. I don't see any lights on in there. There was a green light on, now it's off. Okay, so the troubleshoot could lead us down a path where we discover that maybe the, the battery isn't fully charged or capable of sustaining 12 plus volt under load. Okay. Uh, was there anything else uh, that I can assist you with while I got you? No, we appreciate your help very much. Of course, check your email if you want to see some technical documents and read a little bit more about the system and how to troubleshoot it and all, right and all that good stuff. Sounds good. Right. Thank you so much. You have a safe day, sir. You too. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my God, this is like heaven right now. Are you kidding me? Woohoo, we are celebrating. Okay, so we've been on the phone with customer service for how long? And then our friend from Minnesota comes along and helps us. And not just, and not just a friend from Minnesota, just a but the dad of one of my best friends from Minnesota, a fellow musician who we've shared the stage many times, and he walks over from across the parking right. lot. So we're parked here, and these guys just happen to be right over there. <laughs> that is hilarious. See, it was meant to be. It was meant to be. So this was the deal, uh, to recap. We got here to Air, uh, Casino Arizona in Phoenix, tried to put the slide out, and it started to come out, and then one side Bound, uh, would bind up and the other side would keep going so that's not a good deal because you can completely you know shear screws and things like that uh, we got on with a Lippert tech we have the Schwinn tech system and it would just wouldn't go wouldn't go from what I understand is the sensors on the motors when there's enough resistance they think the slide is all the way out so what was happening when it was binding up because it wasn't aligned it thought it was finished so then it just shut down we hooked the um, the camper to the generator to give it a lot more power, and we kind of powered through it. They resynced, and it came out. The problem with us is, even if we would were to get a hotel room inside, um, we our clothes are all up front, so we don't have, we wouldn't have any clothes, um, anything like that. Well, what are you wearing? I would have to wear what I'm wearing right now, and I have to wear <laughs> this stuff. Oh my yes. God, well, Canada! It's like, and it's a little dirty. Yeah. Anyway, we got the slide out and we're able to use it now fingers crossed it goes back in But at least it's out <coughs> The nice thing is is that we're playing the grand design uh, Rally in quartzite next weekend and there will be techs on hand and I'm gonna grab a cold six-pack and Sidle up to the closest tech and say hey Dangle it in front of his face. I got a couple questions for you See how that goes, but we got the slide out Got a little help from our Minnesota friend, Rick. And uh, yeah, Yeesh. slides. All right, well, look at that. Woohoo! Okay. Welcome to another healthy living tip with Jacqueline. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about sleep, and we all know how important sleep is. 
yet 45% of the population struggles with sleep. So some of the things that can happen when you're not getting enough sleep can lead to high blood pressure, weight gain, contribute to mental health issues, inflammation, and it can compromise your immune system. Think about the last time you got sick, it was because you were run down, right? So today I just wanted to give you some tips for when you should be stopping with certain activities uh, before bed. So five hours before you're going to bed, you should not be having any caffeine anymore. Uh, four hours before bed, no exercising, because that's gonna keep you awake. Three hours before bed, no more alcohol, and uh, you really don't wanna eat a big meal. Two hours before bed, you are going to want to stop if you're working and you don't want to have any real serious conversations because that's going to get your mind going. And then an hour before you go to bed, you should have a digital shutdown. No more TV, laptop, or smartphone. And then it's night night time. Oh yeah, this has been a Healthy Living Tip with Jacqueline. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Border Hookup Score RVing and please remember to subscribe and ding that bell so that we can let all of you know as to when we have more episodes coming out. If you liked what you saw in this video, please give us a thumbs up and place a comment below because we like to know what you're thinking. And we hope to see you out here. We'll see y'all out here. <laughs>